Hi, I'm Jennifer Lee, Admin Evangelist, and this is How I Solve This. Today, we will talk to Haley Teller, architect at Circante. She will show us how she built a BANT model with custom questions and answers using Flow that is super easy to maintain and update using custom metadata type. I'm excited for this episode. I love custom metadata types. This is an awesome admin superpower, and more admins need to add it to their tool belt. Hi, Haley. Thanks for being a guest on How I Solve This. Hi, Jen. Thank you so much for having me. I'm a huge fan of all of your work, and I'm so excited to see you on the Evangelist team. Awesome. So, Haley, share with us a little bit about yourself for those who may not know you and a bit about your Salesforce journey. Sure. Uh, well, I am a consultant with Circante. Uh, we specialize in marketing automation, and I serve as the Salesforce solution engineer at Circante. So that means I get to work on the really interesting kind of next level use cases that our clients have. And it's a whole lot of fun to do that kind of creative work. Um, I came across Salesforce like a lot of people did. I originally was an accidental admin at a nonprofit. So uh, this is actually my second career. I spent 20 years in the military. And when I retired in 2012, I was looking for what my second act would look like. And I wound up working in nonprofits. And I happened to take a job with a nonprofit that needed a new data system. And that was my charter there. And in doing research, I found Salesforce and led the implementation for our nonprofit. And I was bit by the bug and have never looked back. <laughs> Eventually, I made the jump to consulting, and I've been consulting for almost four years now. Great. I think like everyone eventually gets hit by the bug, <laughs> Salesforce bug. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wants to do that forever, right? <laughs> <laughs> so what does the Salesforce Ohana mean to you, and how are you involved in the community? One of the things I love about this platform is that it's so much more than just the platform. It, it really is the community, right? And it's it's that spirit of everybody helping each other out, being able to ask questions in safety, being able to feel like somebody will jump in and help you out is something that I think is really valuable. And I, I don't think you see that everywhere. And I, I feel like that that is very intentional, that, that Salesforce has intentionally led a community and so many wonderful people have contributed to making that culture a reality that I feel lucky just to be a part of it. So for me, that looks like being involved in projects that help veterans find jobs in the Salesforce ecosystem. So we all have our little sub niche as well within Salesforce. For me, that's mine. So I volunteer occasionally with VetForce and I do advocacy work for them. And as in addition to that, I also volunteer with Merivis. So I serve as a coach for Merivis cohorts folks that are looking to skill up and find jobs on the Salesforce platform. I help them with technical pieces. I help them with career pieces, help them with their resumes, practice uh, how to do job interviews, all those fun things they don't teach us in the military to mm -hmm. help military and military spouses find jobs. Oh, and I'm also a, a group leader. I always forget that part, right? <laughs> I'm also a nonprofit group leader for here in Jacksonville, which I absolutely love. And I'm like, I think a lot of other people are really looking forward to the time when we return to more and more in-person right. events because I sure do miss that. <laughs> right. I miss interacting with those in the community. It's There's no substitute. Yeah. It's different when it's virtual versus in-person, right? Right. Yeah. And it's been a strange time because I think virtual has made it possible for us to interact with people in groups we never would have otherwise. But I don't know about you guys. I miss the snacks <laughs> and I miss the hugs. So I'm ready to get back to in-person meeting just as soon as it's safe. Yeah, totally understand. 100% <laughs> agree. <laughs> so I understand that you're known by your team at Circante as the Marie Kondo of flow. Can you share that story with us? Because inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> sure, yeah. I think Flow is one of those tools that opens up a whole world to admins that was previously locked or maybe on other platforms is locked. Um, but it's also one of those places where as you learn, you can sometimes not always em embrace best practice. And we work with a lot of clients that have really leaned forward in that area and they've tried to automate their business processes. But sometimes that technical debt really builds up and you can quickly find yourself in a position where maybe you haven't really embrace the, the best practices on the platform and you wind up with like a, a real gargantuan flow. So one of the things I really love to do is go into an org and find ways to tune it. And one of the best ways is to, is to improve the performance of automations. So I love to take flows that are perhaps a little too big, 
perhaps do things they shouldn't be doing, like hard coding IDs, or maybe doing DML actions and loops and generating errors and clean them all up, make them a whole lot leaner and meaner, make them run a whole lot faster. And it's a lot of fun when you show folks like this was the before and this is the after and to see the vision that they had that they rightly knew they wanted to see in their business process automation brought to fruition with a much higher level of performance. So that's kind of one of the things that I, I really bring to the table that I really enjoy. That's so cool. All right, so uh, please share with us the business problem you're trying to solve for. Sure. So in this case, we have a lot of clients that come to us that already have fairly mature sales strategies and marketing strategies, right? And they're looking for ways to take what they're already doing and have had a lot of success with and bring it onto the platform. So in this case, it was about a sales strategy, a methodology known as BANT, which a client came to us with. And I actually had had heard of BANT, but I didn't really fully understand it. And through this client, I got to take a deep dive into BANT-based selling, which is this idea that there is a model and its, its acronym is budget, authority, need, and time. And that's where you get BANT. Mm -hmm. So the idea is you ask questions on these topics to figure out if your prospect aligns with your product and with your company in these four categories. And the more closely aligned they are, the more likely the deal is to close. So a lot of salespeople use a custom playbook of questions that are very relevant for their industry and often for their specific product to figure out if the prospect is aligned with them in order to make good decisions about where to invest their time, right? Who, who, who is the best fit? Who can we help the most? Who's ready? Uh, who has a budget that aligns with what we have so they can put that effort against the deals that are most likely to close and most likely to help the most people. The problem is they're totally custom questions. So mm -hmm. Bant is really very keyed to the industry and often to a specific sales model. So in this case, a client came to us with a set of questions that they had developed over time that they used to measure these concepts and they wanted to see those reflected in Salesforce. And you couldn't really do them, you know, as like a custom field on the object because first of all, there's just way too many of them. There were like 20 something questions uh, and it really would have been awkward. Um, I couldn't standardize them in any particular way because all of them had different numbers of answers, different values for the answers. So it's not a simple, simple like Likert scale where it's like a one through four. Instead, it's like totally custom answers. And then they had spent a lot of time waiting all of these answers, right? So they had a total score of 400 and they figured out which answers were worth 10 points or 15 points or 25 points and over time had refined this. So how do you take all of that, right? Those custom values and try to bring them into Salesforce. It was, it was awkward, right? And the client also said that, look, we really want this to be super easy for us to update. They didn't want to have to go in and redo flow logic. They didn't want to have to change formula fields. They wanted something that would be easy and flexible to maintain moving forward. So it's definitely a tall order. <laughs> There's no question about that. Right. right. All right. So now show us how you solve this. Sure. So I'm going to share my screen. So probably the most important piece of this is that I used custom metadata to store the business logic. And if you haven't played with it yet, I'm a huge fan of custom metadata. And I really feel like it's really an underused uh, feature of Salesforce. And it's a great way to store your business logic in a place that's both easy for the users or the admin to update and also super easy to refer to in automation. Mm -hmm. It has a terrible name, in my opinion, like it's a very developer -y name and I think it scares a lot of admins. But right. what I like to tell people is custom metadata is custom objects for admins. Mm -hmm. If you can create a custom object, if you can create custom fields, if you can do a page layout, you can create custom metadata and use it as well. And it's a great place to put that business logic. So in this case, I created three custom metadata types or like custom objects for admins. And the first one is holding the BANT question. And when you create these, they look an awful lot like creating any custom object in Salesforce, maybe a bit more classic-y, right? They, they look a little, a little more old school, 
But literally, you just create custom fields, right? And you can style the page layout. You can make it look however you want. So in this case, I have these nice 20 handy records that store all of the questions. And they give them a category. So we can see which ones are authority, which ones are budget, which ones are need. And then I gave them a set of numbers, right? So they would be super easy to refer to later. If the client wanted to change any one of these questions, all they have to do is click edit on an individual record. And it's super simple to change. And I gave them the ability to say, hey, I'm working on one in draft, or I'm working on one that I don't want to use anymore. And so that's retired. But it's super simple to change the question. It's just like updating a field. So this is a really easy way to store that information. Then what I did was I created a custom child record to store the answers. So this captures that you know, one-to-many relationship that each question can have multiple answers. And because I chose a separate custom metadata table to put this information in, I can have as many or as few answers to any question I want, right? So I just associate them with the parent. So in this case, we're also storing not only the answer, right? So this question here is, do we know who the financial decision maker is? Classic sales question. It can have four different answers. Yes, asked unsure, asked will not share, and have not asked. And each of those gets assigned a value, right? According to the model that we've developed. This allows me to store what are the possible answers and what are the scores that they should have. Super simple. The last piece is simply a single record that keeps track of the version. This just lets you say, hey, I want to come in and rework this, retire old stuff, and I want to be able to know which ones of my opportunities are on my old model and which ones are on my new model. Just makes it a little easy to keep track of stuff. So that's most of it, right? Those talk to and interact with a custom object on the front side, as I like to call it, called BANT scores. This is a child object of the opportunity that basically stores that same information. So in the context of a given opportunity, it'll have a set of each of these questions and the answer for that particular record. And I chose a, a master detail lookup because now I can really easily crunch the numbers. Mm -hmm. How many questions have we answered? What's our average score? All that information is super easy to summarize at the opportunity level. So that's the data architecture. How do we make it happen? It's a set of flows, of course. And this is a really great way to offload your business logic out of a flow, right? Rather than hard coding in the flow, question one is this, question two is this, answer three is this many scores, answer four is this many scores. This is a really easy way to basically say, just go get the information out of the custom metadata. So here's a case of an individual BANT score, right? It's already been created with the question. And we'll see where we get those in a second. But this is a really great way to show how easy it is to use custom metadata to store your business logic. So I start with just a simple get, right? This is a screen flow to make it a little easier to work with the record. I give the user an opportunity to pick an answer. All I have to do is just show them a choice set of all of the available answers that are stored in custom metadata. So this, this answer set right here is just a get on custom metadata. It just goes and gets all of the relevant answers and those are what's presented. I didn't have to say what the answers were. I didn't have to do anything with the scores. All that information is stored in custom metadata. It just makes it a little bit easier for people to answer the questions. So what does it look like in the user experience? Let's go back to sales. So if we go back to the sales side, let's make an opportunity and see how it works. I'm going to go to an account. This is a dev org. So, hey, we know and love all of these accounts and see them all of the time. Let's take a look at edge communications. Maybe they want to buy our software. I'm going to create a new opportunity. I'm going to call it Bant test. We'll give it a close date of the end of the month. Maybe it's for one million dollars. And I'll pick an early stage because, hey, we're just getting started. If I open up my BANT test, a very simple flow has gone and gotten each of the valid questions that are stored in custom metadata 
and created a custom child record band score. So here's where we're keeping track of those. They don't have any answers yet, so they don't have any scores. All this part had to do was just go get the questions. So I could open each of those individually, right? Let's see what that looks like. Here's my screen flow that we just looked at. So it tells me this question hasn't been answered yet, right? Do we know who the financial decision maker is? Here are the answers that are stored in custom metadata. They're just presented as options. I'm gonna say, hmm, I haven't asked yet. I have a place to put in a note. We'll ask tomorrow, right? Maybe my supervisor's following up on these. It updates my answer, finishes the flow. If I were to look at the details, I can see that my answer has been put in there and I gave it a score of zero because then I haven't asked yet. So I'm not really crushing it on my band model, right? I put in a few related record uh, components because I really like to be able to see into the other record. So that's great. It's kind of a pain if I have to open every single one of these individual things, I bet we can make that a little better. So we have one big flow on the opportunity page that uses a component from unofficial SF, unofficial salesforceflow.com. So shout out to all the fabulous people, Alex Edelstein and all the great people there that are developing for unofficial flow. I love you guys and you save me so much time and effort. But here I can come along with this data table element and I can answer multiple questions at once. So maybe I pick the rest of the authority questions and I say, all right, let's go through these. Now I can power through. I can answer a bunch of questions all at once and it'll take me back and refresh my record. Now that I'm starting to answer questions, you can see the value of using Bant score as a child record on the custom method on the master detail side, because it's so easy to just total that information up. Here's my total score. And in this case, because 400 is the maximum score, I used a five star picture. This is just a formula field that references an image in, in this, that's available in every Salesforce org. So you can Google these. And if you know Steve Mo or post on <laughs> any of the groups Steve Mo hangs out in, he'll help you with your formula field. And it shows on a five-star scale, how's my score going? Mm, not too great, right? We've only got one star. But I also used a little trick, again, a formula field using images to show how far along I am in the completion of the model. So all that does is just compute a percentage complete and shows it as pixels. So now I have a visual indication of how far along I am. And because I created this under the beta version, when the opportunity was created, we just stamped that field with beta. So if I needed to refresh all of these, I could really easily run a report that showed me, hey, what opportunities do I have in flight that are under the beta version as opposed to version 1.0? It just depends on how many versions that you want to maintain. Mm -hmm. So now the customer has super easy way to maintain their own BAMP model it's as simple as updating any other record in Salesforce. You don't have to change the flows. When you change all of the questions, you could change all of the business logic. The flow is still the same. It hardly ever has to be updated and it's super easy for users to come in here and just score their opportunity as they go. Wow. That was a really cool solution. And I love how you use custom metadata type. I agree with you that it is um, a superpower of admins that is underutilized. Um, so thank you for bringing that forth um, in your example, using it to easily maintain information outside your flow instead of like hard coding uh, values. So thank you so much, Haley, for being a guest on How I Solve This and for sharing your solution with us. You're welcome. Thank you so much for having me. It was really fun. That was a great example by Haley, who used custom metadata types with Flow to make it super easy to maintain and update custom questions and answers fast. Custom metadata types is an awesome admin superpower. It's all about working smart, not hard. You can always find videos like this at admin.salesforce.com and also by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Salesforce Admins, so you will never miss another episode of How I Solve This. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.